Oh, I think it's a Wayne. I think it's you that ju- you just go in straight raw and don't edit or anything. Yeah, it is me. <laughs> you always go in straight raw, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Welsh way, but... Hello, Jim Dramatic here. Welcome to a brand new episode of Robot Wars Episode Reviews. But yes, as I said, we've started Series 6. Finally! Because I was on Series 5 way too long than I wanted to be. Um, so yeah, started Series 6. Um, I don't know. Uh, as you just heard me heard, get interrupted there, I have um, a Wayne. Tend to gesture on my uh, guests. I, I seem to interrupt your intros a lot when I'm on. I'm, I'm just anticipating all the time at this point now. I really, I mean, it, you you were you were earlier than I thought you were. I thought you'd let me get a sentence off before you interrupt me. But I guess uh, you're on you're you're on cute. You're way more eager this time, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. And also joining us is uh, Mike, Mister Psycho Two. Wow, who would think that it was the loud American that was not interrupting you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, Wayne's had years and years of experience. <laughs> it seems, but um... he's a secret American. That must be what it is. <laughs> I mean, that, that's probably why. It's the, it's the unknown part of America, Wales, no one knows about. Uh, and... He's found my secret. <laughs> found your secret out. But, uh, yay, Series 6 has started. Woo! Is um, that something we about? Well, I don't know. I mean, Series 6, it's one of those... Both Series 6 and 7 are two series that are not a big nostalgic factor for me, so trying to remember what happens apart from the basic who won is kind of hard for me at times. But... Hopefully, going through these episodes individually might help me, you know, get my memory back on some parts of it. Uh, with, ser- with series six, it w- it was very predictable who would win each fight, though. Yeah, actually, between series five and six, most of them were the same semi-finalist, I believe. Yeah, like, there were some, there were some other ones, but you know, every time you saw a semi-finalist from last series, you mostly go, "Oh, I, I think I know who's winning this one." Probably. Like there was a couple of surprise heat winners, but not enough. Most of them, you knew who was winning. Yeah. Um, but before we actually get into the actual heat, there are two new additions to this series. Actually, a third one, technically, is the format, first of all. The format for Series 6 and 7 is identical, where you have two four-way matches, and it goes into two versus two, two lots of two, and then, then the heat final. Um, as opposed to the... when they, In Series 5, they brought back the Series 3 uh, way of doing it, where it was like three you know, four lots of two battles. Um, but here... I I, I kind of like the the four way matches at the beginning, and I think you get way more going on them, happening in them. But it's it's not like in series five where it was like a shit one shit robot just dies in two seconds and then that's the match. That case, yeah, um, you definitely get a a lot more action out of a fight that fifty percent of it doesn't work. Yeah, exactly. I mean, even like it's like one robot doesn't work. It usually lasts like it's usually quite quick. If it's a bad one, like you usually know who's going out in the first bit. Like there's only a few exceptions, like um, with terrible and sort of tornado that was kind of unexpected. It just came out of absolutely nowhere. It was like, oh, they're, they're going to go through bonk pit. Oh. oh no, newcomers are gone. The the absolute newcomers. <laughs> Look how new the robot <laughs> is. There's newcomers and they're gone. No. I mean, the robot has literally not changed pretty much. Is apparently a newcomer, but yes. Um, but the other two big changes, of course, are the two additions to the house robots. Of course, we have. Um, well, we actually have Mr. Psycho here, so I'm sure he'll be able to tell us about all uh, about what Robot Wars is like. Uh, and we also have uh, Growler. Hey, um, the best house robot in the original series. I actually I like Growler. You know, I kind of think he's like one of those kind of. Um, he's the most kind of like uh, built to be a um, a pullback. Yeah, out of them all, and I think I I think I have it somewhere. I think I got I think, uh, I bought a few off uh, off Alex Alex Hunter, and I think I've got a Growler with me, which is he's he's perfect for it. Um, he's also probably one of the more solid house robots overall. Like he's actually he's bloody fast for a start. I mean, he's built like a brick. <laughs> well, he literally looks like you're like throwing a brick at your opponent. And he just his jaws really weren't like this. The, even though like that was sort of his main thing, he didn't. He mostly just rammed into shit. That tend to be like his only skill. That was like his first strategy before he even like went in with the jaws. Yeah. And then there's Mr. Psycho, not to be confused with Mr. Psycho 2. Well, they are the same person, and it's just it's lost weight over the years. Of course, yes. <laughs> what happened to your hammer, though? That's the question. 
Uh, I think I left it at my mom's place, to be honest. Oh, damn it. Um, now, Mr. Psycho is basically just to kill up with a hammer. The fat. And is really big as well. <laughs> like he's Sir Fat a lot. Yeah, kind of. I mean, he's. I think. I think in the entire time of the series, I think he only got flipped over once. I think. Twice. Firestorm, I think it was. Firestorm. Well, Firestorm, and if you want to count it, Junkyard Queen in the German Robot Wars. I mean, could you, would you? Would you count that? I mean, I probably would, but. Uh, Junkyard, well, Junkyard Queen was in the air at the time. Ah. <laughs> yeah, uh, Mr. Psycho grabbed Junkyard Queen, held her aloft, um, did circles, and then overbalanced and fell. Ah. So it was... It was... So it was, it was much like the case of Groundhog taking out Sir Killalot. Yeah. If, Pretty if, much. If it, then yeah, we'll count it, but there's some technicalities to go with it. In terms of, like, pure flipping over them, really, Firestorm's the only one that, like, purposely went for it. Yeah, and actually, got, and actually got them over, but uh, the growler got flipped over a bunch. The fact that Junkyard Queen was immobilized at this point as well—that's quite pathetic. Then, <laughs> <laughs> um, imagine the German series. Had a few, actually, was it the German or the Dutch series? That was the what was run amok? Was that German or Dutch? Uh, Dutch. Yeah, because was that one that got yeah, that's one that got t- taken out by the sp- floor spinner and had to be like forever stuck on top of a pole. It wasn't a pole; it was a tree. Oh, was it a tree? Just it's in a tree. Yeah, I bet it's probably still there, just being humiliated. Yeah. To this just, day. Uh, that, of all the sad ways a robot could go. Just the floor spinner. I am and like the being only, stuck free. Like the only time like you can get away with be, being being beaten by the um floor spinner is if you're like a featherweight. Yeah. <laughs> you're an ant weight. You know, if you're like really low like if you're like up to middleweight maybe, but as a heavyweight you shouldn't that shouldn't really be a problem. Really. But uh, overall, the additions to the new house robots—they, I don't know, like they—they were—they were okay. But then I just kind of like when then he went crazy with Cassius Chrome in Series Seven. I was, I mean, that that that's still just one of the biggest whys. The series. Cassius all right as a competitor robot idea, not as a house robot idea. Well, yeah, no, because he—I don't think he did—I don't think he did anything against any of the competitors in Series Seven, apart from being like the punching bag, which is ironic because he was actually a punching robot. But... I remember in his first match, it actually immobilized a robot. Did he? Uh, I'm trying to think, Mechaniac, Mechaniac. Oh, it was Mechaniac, right? <laughs> then again, Mechaniac was also up against Supernova, so Supernova might have just done the damage and Miss uh, Cassius Chrome finished him off. Probably, I can't imagine he would like purposely be able to knock something out. But I mean, I, I'm not the biggest fan of Mister. S- it's gonna get me confusing now. I'm talking about Mike, or I'm talking about the robot. <laughs> like, no, I don't like Mister Psycho. No, I uh, I'm not the biggest just fan. Just call one. Just call one Fat Mister Psycho and the other one American Mister Psycho. Okay, Fat Fat Mister Psycho. I'm not a fan of a Fat Mister Psycho as much because I always thought like we had to kill a lot. We don't need like another one that sort of does the same thing but just has a hammer rather than a drill um, or a lance in the earlier series. But I I, I like Growler. Growler's a good addition. I I kind of like the uh, I, I I like the idea of them like you know got mist, you know fat Mister Psycho with a massive hammer and you got Growly's little pet, but um, the pet was actually better than the master. It seemed like for me. Yeah. Way more maneuverable as well. Who sees a more entertainment value? Yeah, I mean, yeah, he's more there. I mean, the uh, the hammer did a, f- a few times to its credit. Did actually did some things sometimes, but most times he did just miss. <laughs> the most the most entertainment I ever got from Mister Psycho. Fat, uh, fat Mr. Psycho <laughs> was uh, when it knocked its own head off during Series 7. <laughs> I forgot about that. I mean, at some point, the house robot's going to lose something from them. Like, they lose still was like, I mean, it's always, I mean, the worst one was probably, um, I remember, like, Sir Killer, like, lost his, like, breastplate and got set on fire or something, like, in two, like, two heats in a row. And I was like, wow, you just, you just suck. But, uh, yeah, this the, the, that was the house robots, and I guess we'll move on to the competitor robots. As there's uh, eight, but split into two four-way battles, we'll we'll just go with the um, winner and work backwards, like I usually do. And who'd have thunk it? Razor won. Oh um, gosh! I, I I am so shocked that they, they didn't really have any robot that were massively threatening to them in this heat, really. They worked two series in a row? Jesus fucking Christ. That's the biggest surprise. I mean, they never really had any massive faults after, seri- after as soon as they got into Series 5. 
It's like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> well, I mean, it helps that they didn't really have any difficult opponents to face. Well, they didn't in Series 3, and so they still managed to pin themselves to the floor. They didn't in Series 4, either. Well, with the exception. Pussycat. Pussycat, yeah, Pussycat was the only worthy competitor they really had in Series 3 and 4 combined in the main series. Because obviously, we exclude the World Championship, they had Chaos 2, Bay, and those kind of robots. But, uh, 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 Pussycat was the only real worthy competitor Razor ever faced, all the way up until the sem- semi-finals of Series 5. That is quite depressing, really. <laughs> um, are, we excluding, are, are we including Extreme run, in there? Because, let, well, no, not, I mean, in the main series. Because let's run them off. Backstabber. Nope. Agro. Nope. Robo Chicken. Nope. Ossorapid. No. Nope. Ossoripper. Millie Anberg. Nope. Pussycat. Yep. The first Big Nipper. No. <laughs> <laughs> Widow's Revenge. Definitely not. Rick. Do I have to say anything? <laughs> and then it was Spawn again in the first. Match of the semi-finals? I'll count it, but because only because it's Series Five spawn again, and not Series Six spawn again. But... Well, Series One again was still shit. It was, but at least it worked in its heat <laughs> in Series Five. <laughs> it, had, it had the excuse in Series Five that both got semi-finals, it wasn't working as much. But by Series Six, it had no excuse in the first so, round. From all the oh, and also um, was it Pandemonium they first fought in Series Two? Oh no, um, Inquisitor. Inquisitor. Yeah, that was so. Cool. It, from series two to the second round of the semi-finals in series five, they only had one worthy opponent. Yeah, it took them until series five to get out the heat. It's just kind of funny to me. <laughs> Still, after all that time, but and, and this is the face of Robot Wars. Yeah, I mean, we haven't really got much else to say about Razor, honestly, because the amount of times I've talked about Razor now is just absurd. Given depressing. To, yeah, given the count, because Extreme as well, where it was just everywhere there as well. And it was in the World Championship as well. Just, uh, <laughs> I've talked about this thing enough. So I guess we can move on to the new uh, next robot, the Heat Finalist, which was the uh, sequel to Nightmare, who didn't make it into Series 5, but they made it into the um, into the Annihilator, where they lost to Disco Inferno in the uh, final. But uh, we have Raging Reality now, as their I... next robot. I... What? I do like it. It's a, very, it's a very unique shape for the flipper. It is. Um, I, I one, one detail I like about it quite instantly is just the little mascot coming out of the front. They have, a little, it, they have like a little door that opens up and like the little... One of those things that adds personality to a robot but is seriously not needed. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's a bit like... Um, it reminds me a lot of Series 2 Megahertz those little drives that come out of it and the you know the slots for the discs and the keyboard and all that. It's like, there's no point of that but they did it. And I kind of like that. Yeah. Way more than just a box, it's just a flipper. It's like, because the rest of the robot isn't like amazing looking, maybe. The only thing that strike, you know, makes it stand out, really, is its giant, like, triangle shaped flipper. It, it's kind of a unique shape for a flipper robot as well. You don't really see, like, pure boxes as flippers, let alone effective flippers. Well, that is true. I mean, not in the UK, you don't. No. Yeah, that is true. I mean, well, then again. US, you're not allowed to be a wedge, otherwise you're worse than Hitler, so... Of course. <laughs> but compared to Nightmare, which is what it was just a wedge with a flipper on it... It was literally a block of cheese. Yeah, and it ended up having what they probably the worst heat final out of any Series 4 robot. Could and it... then we go on to be in the worst Annihilator. Yeah, at least it got really beaten up, though, <laughs> in the Annihilator. <laughs> I mean, I think so, yeah, they failed to qualify for Series 5 and they only, only got into the Annihilator. And they didn't even really earn their Annihilator place because it was Bulldog. Was it, no, Bulldog Breed, wasn't it, that beat them? Yeah, Bulldog Breed uh, that beat um, I can't Nightmare. Remember, I can't remember who else was in it. I think it was Mouse Trap. We had um, we had Bulldog Breed, and then we had Fighting Talk. Hmm. Bad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can at least say that Nightmare was better than Fighting Talk, though. Napalm. Which had- Pushed into the arena sideways by the ref bot. <laughs> we also had Panic Attack, okay. uh, Inferno, mm-hmm. and Steel Avenger. So really, only half the heat was actually viable. Yeah, and, and Panic Attack broke even, down. Even then, of the two robots that were actually kind of good, Panic Attack broke down. Yeah, 
And then Macau just left for Steel Avenger and Disco Inferno, which up until that point, Disco Inferno really hadn't proven itself in any way. No. Apart, from, apart from just getting into Annihilator, which seemed like really easy considering this Annihil- that, that particular Annihilator. Put it this way, the best robot in that Annihilator up until the final match was Steel Avenger. Yeah, and that's uh, not. I mean, it's 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 a reliable robot, but not like a top tier robot. No. <laughs> so that says a lot, really. It's like that's probably C class robot, I'd say. It, it wasn't great. It wasn't a great Annihilator at all. No, uh, but I, I do like the design of. Ra- I know they changed the name to Raging Nightmare, so kind of combining the two, their new name and their old name together in Series Seven. It's Raging Morgue now, isn't it? These days. Is that what it is now? I think so. So they've kind of they've combined three robots now. <laughs> names at some they, point. They bought the flipper shape to just a panel now. Oh, is it? This is not like a triangle shape anymore. No, uh, it's a, like a panel flipper now. So it's basically like, it is like the Morgue one they had. Or Mini Morgue mm. or something. Yeah. Oh, that's a bit of a shame. I, 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 do like the, I do like the triangle design slightly more, but it, it, it did lead to a really funny heat final in Series 7 where Spawn again <laughs> just blew up. <laughs> that is my favourite heat final from Series 7, just for like everything that could have gone wrong went wrong yeah, and, the, and also the fact they bounce spawn again on the wall before flipping them out I know <laughs> it's just like they're just taunting them or unable to flip them either one but I mean let's it's, face it's, let's face it's it spawn, in... it's like spawn again was performing too well for its own good in the heat and then god was just like wait a minute that's spawn again it shouldn't be doing this good malfunction I think all this bad luck just built up, built up, and then when it got into the heat, finally it all just crashed on it in two seconds. <laughs> yeah. Like you're not allowed to have too much luck spawn again. You can't have this. <laughs> I mean, we were saving malfunction tokens for this very moment. I think it was all the karma from sport from Supernova in Series Six came back to bite them. Because <laughs> given, the, given that Supernova in Series Seven didn't really last very long, <laughs> so it's yeah. like you know, <laughs> give them a chance. But uh, yeah, I like Raging Reality. It's it's a shame because if it was another heat with like maybe a different semi finalist that wasn't like so, maybe it was against something like Spawn again, it would been a it would been a semi finalist easily in this series. I'm not sure because there was a good a lot of good robots that made the semi finals in this series. I was saying it was against something like Spawn again. I meant that it was like have a lower tier like uh, yeah, yeah yeah. But again, it's against Razor, so <laughs> and it's got a very easily grabbable front front oh, yeah. So just like Cyrax. Which I'll give it credit, it didn't really get affected by Razor at any point. It just kind of just got holes put in it. I'm of a mixed opinion with Cyrax. I like the robot, but I don't like the shape of the robot. I'm not a fan of the axe as much. Like they did just because it's the same team as Wild Willy from Series yeah. Three, and I think the, they've just they taken act. the same axe. It is. It's the exact same axe mechanism. Yeah, and not. It, me- it wasn't flywheel powered this time, but it's the same axe. And it's kind of awkward on this particular shape, because at least with Wild Willy, it was like a big box. So it kind of... It had a little wedge on the front, so it kind of worked a little bit. Because, I mean, it actually at least damaged Flip Flop Fly, which has a lot, because it's Flip Flop Fly. But, yeah. yeah. But they, it always felt like it was too long in, on this particular design. Like, it never seemed to really... It hit, like, Dougal once, I think, and that's all it really did. Uh, no, it didn't. Oh, did it not? No. Anything bad that happened to Dougal just did not happen in this episode. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, they, they won the heat. Sorry. Yeah. Should, should be more honest with you. But... Mike, you can me, can't you? I'm just... Uh... Okay, so my opinion about Cyrax here. Um, it was kind of like, okay, middle of the road kind of robot, but I'm so confused why they referred to it as purple three times in the episode. <laughs> it's clearly blue. I mean, like, I know colorblindness runs in my family, but I'm not that colorblind. It's weird, because Wild Willy was pur- was purple. But this robot's clearly blue. In, you know, every sense. I think I have an answer. Well, Jonathan Pierce the, is just colorblind. That could be it. I think it's because the, um, like, people, the voices of Robot Wars, like Craig Charles and uh, JP their first exposures to these robots are uh, production stills, like uh, photographs taken in the pits. Mm. In some pictures of Cyrax, due to the l- bad lighting, it appears purple, like a very vague shade of purple. Ah, uh, maybe. I think that's where the confusion is coming from. Possibly. Plus, with plus, uh, the Royal Wars Arena has never really had the best lighting at it. No. I, I do think that if the shape was slightly different, and maybe they just focused on the flipper, 
it might have been a little bit better. Yeah. Like, not to say it's a bad road. I mean, honestly, considering this heat, you know, it's 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 very it's very middle of the road. Like in terms, of, like it, there's nothing really particularly horrible about it. Maybe there's nothing like where it goes. This is terrible, but I'm not like going. I I it should have gone for. I think it got as far as it could have really. Like if it was in series five, it probably been a heat finalist. Uh, yeah, it's, Cyrax it's, is like the most average Robot Wars robot I can think of. Yeah, series three would definitely be a heat finalist. Well, yeah, they got they just they just were terribly unlucky with their driving in series three. <laughs> you know, series just, three, you just need to work to the end of the fight, and you'd be a heat finalist. Yeah, and even then, look at Panzer. So yeah, I mean, Panzer could have done nothing to them. So it's really I was, that's more frustrating. And it's actually I remember Wild Willie more purely because of the name. You know, Cyrax is just kind of. Yeah, just... yeah, I was. Cyrax looks identical to Prize Fighter from Series Three. It does actually. I mean, minus the massive ground clearance that Prize Fighter had. It... It's like the same body shape, the same type of flipper. Yeah, it's a little jabbing flipper. Yeah, and it's also one of those teams. It's like it, it took you know, they came. It took them so long to get back into Road Wars. They kind of forgot they existed. It's like, oh, who are you? Oh, you had, uh, you had Wild Wiz. Like, wait, what was that? Oh, you. Okay. Cool. I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for the axe, I might not have suspected it was the same team. Like, there's nothing really else. I mean, I know some people are really great at remembering faces and stuff, but cause it's the same guys from last time. But I probably would never have guessed it was them. Yeah, even with me, like, it took me a while to realize, oh, wait, that's the um, the boys who entered that thing, that, that the, the, the roller coaster thing that drove into the pit and lost the worst thwack bot in Robot Wars history. And then potentially could have even won the heat, but you know. What are you going to do? Uh, but yeah, Cyrax, middle of the road. Right. Um, the only thing, other thing I have to say about it is that it has a pointless light on top of it, and like a lot of pointless lights in Robot Wars, they fall off. Um, and when Mr. Psycho just knocked part of it off by not even hitting it. You know, it's beautiful. As, as the Oblivion team learned in Series 2, don't bring lights into the arena. Or, of course, you have to now because pilot lights and all that, but... Yeah, that's true. In. Well, also, later on in the series, UFO has that weird like, light on the front of it. Which I... Well, it has done it. Yeah, I still don't get that. Um, and then the other robot to lose in, this, in the uh, second round was uh, Tetanus 2. My... Which, incidentally, entered Flip Flop Fly in Series 3 that also fought Wild Willy. I, I actually forgot... I forgot, yeah, it was them, wasn't it? Damn, they, yeah. they come a long way. Um... This is my favorite version of Tetanus, just by aesthetic alone. It um, look, looks just so grungy and industrial, and I fucking love it. It's, it's beautiful. It's, design-wise, it's a lot, definitely a step up from the Series 5 one, which was just a pyramid. With, like, just these crushes that bent on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but in, And the only robot, I think, to ever lose to the steam jets. Or at least you know, be become immobilized by the steam jets, anyway. And Tetanus Booster's just a box with a drum on the front of it. Like, it has a tennis booster I kind of have a soft spot for because of its unique drive, but aside from that... I mean, I, I like the fact that they tried a bit more competitive with it, but it just comes off as a tornado clone a bit. And then they lost tornado, so... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and the Series 6 one, damn. I mean, also there's Extreme 2 with that weird net there at the back of it. On the... I, I still love that. <laughs> I, I, I just love everything about the second version of Tetanus. It just it literally looks like if you touch it you will get tetanus yeah i mean because they replaced the uh the um they got rid of the spike on it and just had just had it as a lifter yeah and that weird like goal post nets on it and it just looks a bit weird but well, I, I love the fact that it's all its internals are inside these two pods at the side it's got its name welded on the side of it and i just love how just grungy and just it, it it literally looks like a successor to dead metal. I mean, the only problem I have with it really is the, I guess the the grabbing weapon's more just to grab as opposed to do any damage because that thing couldn't even get through Raging Reality's armor. Yeah, but I, just, like I'll, I'll, for, I'll forgive this uh, to the moon and back. So. Oh yeah. Plus, also, it was it was like so like it was surprisingly like aggressive and you know really um, good at pushing. Considering its wheels are very thin. Yeah. Right, we see him flipped up. It looks they look like two saw blades. They might have been. Yeah. They might have been. I have no idea. <laughs> they look like those like series two angle grinders you used to have in the arena that used to malfunction uh, every two seconds. Yeah. You know, speaking about 
them maybe being saw blades, they did get kind of stuck in their fight against uh, Raging Reality, didn't they? Yeah. They I wonder did. if they just dug a hole with their saw blades in the arena floor and didn't have any purchase anymore. <laughs> They probably did. <laughs> yeah, because when I flipped over, you still see the wheels are moving, so they definitely had motion. They just got stuck. Um, which is a real shame, because actually, in all the times they appeared in Series 6, they were, for the most part, dominating most of the time they were there. They just, yeah, got stuck somehow. And they're actually very close to taking out Raging, Raging Reality as well. If they did, and they fought Razor in the Heat Final, I think this would have been the only fight ever involving Razor where its opponent actually turned out better than it did when it entered the arena. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only place to grab it really is those little kind of pods on the side. Yeah. I mean, you could get the back of it, but it's kind of tedious. I mean, it's, it is massive, though, this thing. It's just, it's so wide. <laughs> it, it's a scaffolding wet dream is what this robot is. Like, apparently it's, it's 1.34 meters wide. Yeah, it's and... so stupid, but I love it. Oh yeah, it's definitely again. As I said, it's my favorite version of Tetanus. Um, just again, p- purely on a, st- a design aesthetic, and really, but even then, it was decently performed okay in the heat, considering how you know how early it went. It was the only robot doing anything in its first round, so <laughs> you know, I'll give it that. Well, well, f- well fuck you then. Oh, sorry. I will we'll move on to it then, just because I know this is. I think this is partially why you wanted to be in this heat, really. Oh, you, you've upset me now. Have I? I wanted to be in the seat. You asked me. Yeah, but I asked you purely because I knew this would be a good incentive for you. Uh, so, um, yes, this next rower is this next rower is just so near and dear to my heart, and it's single-handedly like brought my love back to the robot hearing community. It's Wasp. Oh, good old Wasp. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll, well, we'll talk about one first, just get over and done with, because... Yeah, talk about Wasp. Wasp, yeah. Wasp is in the con- in the contender for worst robot of Series 6. <laughs> it really, it's like your top three, honestly. If it, there's Dr. Fist and this short circuit also very... could easily be eligible for this, but I wouldn't I wouldn't go far and say that short circuit is, but definitely between Dr. Fist and Wasp is certainly a uh, There's, there's also Spam, but at least Spam nearly reached the fucking heat final. Yeah, Spam technically worked all the way through its performances. Uh, Wasp died in the CPZ and was so weak that uh, Sir Killock could actually drill a hole through it. It it, it was literally pornography. I'm surprised it was shot on TV so early. Um, Actually, fun fact, if you watch the Dave reruns, then they've um, censored this scene until after the 9 o'clock deadline. (laughs) I mean, it's, it's it's too crazy for TV, let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but one thing I do like is it, it's um, its name. What a silly project is uh, almost... so fucking just that. That is just like a lovely little detail. I like it because there, there are other robots that kind of try that kind of acronym name like rocks, and it just comes off as a bit stupid. While this is like, like honestly, it's it's just perfect for this robot. Because yeah, the fact, it, the fact that this robot doesn't even look anything like a wasp, it looks more like a bee. Yeah. <laughs> is it the distant cousin of B Capitator, though? That is the question. Probably. It wor- it, it, I mean, at least B Capitator worked. I don't know what this thing did. Yeah. I mean, I always think the gang had a saw on it. Yeah. You know what I, um, you know I theorise is that they didn't actually intend for it to be a wasp. Like, yeah. they were just built a robot and they just realised they haven't got a name. They were just like, what What can we call this thing? It's like, well, f- what? I don't know, what a silly project or something. And it was just like, perfect! And... <laughs> That's an acronym for a B. Also, no, it is. Also, fun, B. <laughs> also, fun fact: I don't know. This is probably because of that spike on the back, which is way too long. But it's longer than Tetanus is wide. Tetanus two is. <laughs> it's like ten centimeters longer. So it's clearly just this wide robot. that's just, and it's weird. It worked as soon as it, when it when they came out of the like the the gate. It worked, and then after that, it just didn't. And I don't know what happened. I think it's they lost drive on one side because it wasn't going anywhere else afterwards. And then Sir Killot decided to, you know, completely you know, penetrate it. What's, only- what's really funny to me about that is, like, he didn't even, like, take the time to, like, drill through material or, like, set up, like, an elaborate attack for this. Killalot just drove into Wasp and the Lance just went straight through Wasp's side. I know. <laughs> there, there's a 
two pictures of Wasp here on the um, Six Wars Heat A page on the wiki. Hmm. Both of them, bad things are happening to it. <laughs> I might have might put a sensor bar on my thumbnail. Yeah, <laughs> this one is, is literally um, Sir Killalot chest deep inside of Wasp. <laughs> Fisting it, and, pretty much. And, and the other is just Wasp in the background being picked on by Sergeant Bash and Razor. <laughs> Actually, one thing I liked in the fight, it just kept getting flipped onto the robots all the time. I know. <laughs> it was the ultimate punching bag of this heat. No one gave this poor thing a chance. <laughs> and it's kind of funny to think that this thing didn't last as long as fucking Brutus Maximus, a robot made of wood. Well, I... to be fair, Wasp wasn't made of much else, was it? No, but I'm sure it had slightly better armor than wood. I mean... I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sort of surprised this thing managed to survive multiple hits from Razor before finally getting, you know, kicked out. Because... Are we talking about Bruce Maximus now, then? Yeah, that was my segue into it, pretty much. <laughs> I mean, I, 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 I do like Bruce Maximus for the comedy value of it, because this thing was clearly one of those robots they were just not giving a shit of how, of how good it was supposed to be. They just wanted to bring a dumb robot in. And I respect that more, honestly. <laughs> um, and I keep saying the things in Series 7. But that I would build, to be honest. Yeah, the Series 7 version is literally identical as well. <laughs> this, like it's pretty much the same robot, but with a slightly different paint on it. Arguably, I'd say worse and paint. And upside down as well. Yeah, that is true. Because um, in series six they lead with the wedge, but in series seven they lead with the uh, saw blades. Yeah, and all of the saw blades, you know, like I think Jonathan Pierce called like some rotary, you know, rotary bludger weapon or something. I'm like, you, you, you're overhyping saws. Um. Actually, it's funny. In, in its qualifier, Brutus Maximus had like kind of Roman like shield like shield shapes on the side of it for its wheel guards. Yeah, that was kind of inventive, at but, least. Yeah, but in, the, in I guess maybe it was maybe it was a, I don't know if it was a weight thing because this thing it's hundred kilograms somehow. Uh, don't ask me how this thing's hundred kilograms. But in the yeah, in its official version, it just it just was flat on the side, which just fire. They had they had the Roman shields in series seven, at least. Yeah, they brought it back for series seven, but. There was absolutely no way this robot, without without something terribly wrong happening to Raging Reality or Razor, this thing was ever getting past the heat in the first round at all. Because, yeah, it's made of wood, and the wheel, and the bicycle, it's got bicycle wheels. It's Wait. got fucking bicycle wheels, James. Yeah. <laughs> it's got bicycle wheels. Yeah, the last robot to bring bicycle wheels in this entire series was the only other robot, which was Aurac in series two. Fucking yeah, it did lead to some fun. One probably one of my favorite moments of this heat is when the wheel rolled into the pit. I know that, that was. Did, I don't know how Razor did that, but they just managed to pluck it out of the robot and make it fly into the pit. And I kind of find that brilliant. The exact same thing happened in their next fight in Series Seven as well. And it's also it's lo it's lo it's the longest robot in this heat. It's one it's, it's one it's over one and a half meters long. This thing. It's just. just why is it so big as well? Because it's just kind of because it's, it's so, I think it's just to account for the bicycle wheels. That... You know, what? I'm looking at this um, picture of Bruce Maximus right now on the wiki of its wheel falling off in series seven. Mm. And two things. First thing, uh, this thing has got zip ties on the inside of it. <laughs> Second thing, that wheel does not not look like it was connected onto anything because I do not see an axle or a motor or anything. I just see a bunch of holes in the armor, and that's it. There is nothing holding that wheel on. I am pretty sure that that wheel that fell off was just free roaming. Yeah, you know what I see? I see the um, what do they call it? The the cassette that has all the sprockets on the bicycle wheel that attached to that bicycle wheel they literally just pulled it off of a bicycle and probably just held it with the same bolt to the robot probably it would not surprise me because given this this robot's pedigree um but like like, like i said i do kind of enjoy how bad this robot is again like there was no they knew there was no way they were ever getting through this so at least not destroyed you know if you're gonna bring a wooden robot in theory and at least get it destroyed uh, you know uh, this team actually got in trouble in Series 7. What for? They were very naughty in the qualifier. Ooh, what did, what did they do? Uh, they brought a net into the arena. Oh, wow. Yeah. They fought uh, Mean Streak. You know Mean... Well, I, I, I'd be surprised if you remembered Mean Streak, but they fought Mean Streak in the Series 7 qualifier. 
And Mean Street got tangled in a net that Bruce Maximus brought in. I was surprised we were allowed into the main series then. Uh, you know Discredit Places says here, so. Ah, that's probably what. Probably because they had, they, had, they, had, they had so many crap robots made in Series 7, I guess they threw them in as well. True. It's like, yeah. I was going to say, the Robot Wars qualifiers have never really been about qualifying, have they? No, they have not. <laughs> no. I mean, some like, of the robots yeah. win all of their qualifiers, don't get accepted into the show. Some of the robots lose all their qualifiers. They get accepted immediately. Yeah, it's because it's yeah. that um, producers wanting things to look good or at least look like they're going to get destroyed to make entertainment. It's why Razor, the defending champion, fought wooden robots in the first round. Yeah, and then Hypnodisc, right near the end of the series, got to um, fight Granny's Revenge and 4x4, and it didn't destroy Wait, either of them. Sheep's clothing. Yeah, and it's funny because neither of those, and neither of those robots got actually got hit by by Hypnodisc that much. I mean, Granny's Revenge got beaten up by um, by Barbarous, of all things. So I don't know. Yeah, Barbarous in series six was good. It was good. Yeah, it's just funny how they put him against Hypnodisc and uh, and didn't want even connect at any point. But good old and Bruce. Then, and they, uh, I kind of got immobilized by, um, like I said, your wife, who is now. <laughs> Uh, dressed up as someone else because yeah. they put in a uh, lawsuit against you and changed their identity. Uh, that's how that's how that's how that's how life is sometimes. I know. And uh, yeah, and, and, that, and, and that was also in summary for uh, Brutus Maximus. Or I should say, uh, as it's written on the front of it, Brutus Maximus, because the way they write visas use. So, uh, yeah. I think that that says Romane et Domus. Oh, go, they go yous. <laughs> oh, they, they go missed, home. Doesn't they really missed the opportunity to put a Monty Python reference on there? And I know Versus Kedrick already did it, but if Common Kedrick can do it, why can't you? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, we'll talk about your boy next because you know we've uh, we've, we've got yes. to my boy Anthony Murney, who owned well owned a Beetleweight version of Weldor Three. Yes, that is true. Weldor Three. It's kind of a shame this thing never the flipper never worked on this thing very well in this in the in the in the main series. We got to see it a little bit in the um side event. Yeah, it's self really well. Yeah, the, the flipper was actually powerful. Um it just seemed to be quite inconsistent, sadly. Because it was able to self write itself really well, like really high up as well. Um not really sure why they needed the the spinner at the back, really. I think of... if this version was a bit more well designed and more focused to spot on the flipper, it'd actually be a, like a like like a predecessor to Apollo or something. Yeah. Also, I appreciate they went back to the camo look because yeah. I, the one, one thing I didn't like about World War Two is I had that very kind of I can I can that very early two thousands poly poly carb on it where it just I mean, um, small talk did the same thing and like uh, he had a, a hammer and tong those kind of robots they just look like kind of cheap because they're just like made out of plastic. You are listing all robots from Series 4 right now, and you are not wrong in that statement. Yeah, Series 4 was like the plastic series, it felt like. Yeah. A lot of, lot of robots. Even, like, even, that part, even King B was a bit guilty of it at points. We had the plastic on top of it. Well, King B still polycarb, so... Yeah, exactly, but I don't know. It wasn't all just plastic, as I mean. At least they had like different colours on it and stuff. And you know, there's, It wasn't just all one colour like Weldor 2 was. True. But Weldor 3, it went back to the nice camo design. I kind of like the uh, improved, kind of the more kind of darker camo, because the series... Obviously, the, the one in series three had more kind of like a pot coloured, you know, marijuana green camo. This one's kind of like this kind of darker green. It was a pear. Yeah, pretty much. Um, but yeah, in, in terms of like the actual design, again, apart from the little spinner at the back, I actually do like the the idea a bit more of going for the proper wedge on it. But we never actually saw it fire once in series six. Sadly not. No. Um, also, didn't he steal it from his brother? Um, according yeah, to... I seem to recall them saying a couple of times that they stole it from the, the the guy's brother and that they had no idea what to expect because they didn't know anything about it. <laughs> I love that. Like, that. That's the best way to enter a robot. Just robot. steal it and then get stitched up on what it was when the robot didn't get past the first round. That's 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 one way to that's that's a hill to die on, at least. It's a bit like the um, the Blade team in Series Three where he stole these. Uh, Stole it. it was his grandmother's. He stole his grandmother's lawn lawnmower to make it. I know. And he only and he only confessed when he was on TV when he got aired. So it's like fair enough. Or or you could be the hefty team from series three where the 
captain's wife didn't know how much the row up cost and then philippa just screamed it at the top of her lungs right into the camera wasn't it like three grand or something yeah and it's like a robot that lasts about five seconds well, be- because it was literally just a miniature tank yeah i'm not sure where the three grand went honestly but there's a lot of paint job down there there's a lot of flowers on it a lot of colors but i i do feel bad for the world or team honestly because the series there's one of the series four version got KO'd by little fly. Um, Talk about that. No matter how much Anderson swears that it is the next Chaos Two. Yeah, and I love that. That's, that's his only evidence that why little fly is good because it managed to KO a robot. But then bear in mind, technically any robot can KO over the robot if they just knock their link out accidentally. It's not an achievement. <laughs> Anderson, I love you, but just stop. Yeah, stop with the little fly love. It didn't. It wasn't worthy in any regard. Stop existing, jeez. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I like the more streamlined version of World War 3. It's just, again, it's just very unlucky, really, more than anything. Like, it could have at least got past the first round, given the robots it was against. Like, mm-hmm. I mean... I mean if Mike, you had... anything to add to um, World War 3 before we just move on to the inevitable roasting that's about to happen? <laughs> Go on. No, I really don't have much else to add, other than it was it was a case of a team that kind of started out well and then just kind of progressively got worse even though their robot got better they just did worse and worse yep yeah and of course we've got to talk about your boy <laughs> your yep. who's upgraded from uh gray with a coat on to now fully pink he is uh of course rough rough dougal he is my boy i i do love him uh I mean, you got to give him credit. Last series, he didn't, he didn't set on fire. And, well, his ears got blown off. But <laughs> he still, he told, he, you know, he's deaf, but he can still say he wasn't burnt. And now this series, I think it's a good, like, what, 20 seconds into the, into the match, his tail sets on fire. And yeah. this, then, then, then the next camera, you know, they're showing a shot of it in the camera, and it's half on fire. Look how they massacred <laughs> my boy. <laughs> I felt so bad. Cause, like, how fast did that fire spread on it? Well, it was loft insulation, wasn't it? So Yeah, it was bound to happen. Flammable. <laughs> now, here's the question. Is the pink version better, or is the grey one with the uh, coat better? Both are better, because he is the same boy. He's just very fashionable. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't think much changed from Series 5 to 6, really. I, Didn't I mean, they say that literally the only thing that changed was where they put the removable link? Yeah, they put yeah. it up his ass. Yeah, it's now a suppository. <laughs> he has a suppository well, well, removal link. Yeah, if you plugged an electrical cord into your ass, you'd start going and all, wouldn't you? Yeah, <laughs> probably. I would one more we'll fight, but I'm sure I'd go with it. Also, but, I love his official I, picture. Has his little dog ball. Yeah, I, I love that. <laughs> I, I do have. I do have to say that this has been a rather odd journey that I've been on, because this whole journey with me and Dougal started with your podcast. Wow, really? Because remember when we were reviewing Series 5 Heat D, which was Dougal's other heat, Hmm. and halfway through the podcast, I found that picture of Dougal on a scrap heap. Yeah. And since then, I got in contact with Lorna Sturgis, the daughter of the guy who made Rough Rough Dougal. Um, Sad to say, Dougal had been scrapped the year before. But I did get permission to build a new Dougal, which was going to be heavyweight, but then I realized I've never actually built a heavyweight before. I think I'll go for a lighter class. So myself and with the amazing help of Anthony Murney and Elizabeth Mann, especially Elizabeth, because she built all the electricals and all the internals of Dougal. I just built the shell. We now have our son. <laughs> and well, Dougal quite is my son and... He's got his own fan base now and everything, and now I'm back on the podcast with you, and it's just come full circle in the space of just under a year. And it was, and he, and he, he did quite a good job at Robo Nerd as well. Yeah, I uh, came six in the content rumble or content creators rumble, so I'm pretty happy with that. <laughs> Plus, I, I, I had the honor of uh, looking after Dougal briefly when we were like traveling in your car to and fro there. Yeah, um, you shared the Dougal. I, sh- I shared I shared a passenger seat with Dougal. I'm I'm 100 honored. Oh, pop, and, pop Dougal, sorry. And Dougal lasted hit and run. 
sorry, Mike, but it, it happened. So I mean, just about everything could have outlasted Hit and Run, to be fair. <laughs> also, uh, actually, I, I know we just talked about World War a second because they also we had the uh, the uh, mini version of World War Three in that um, content creators yeah, as well. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, the miniature Weldor Three with uh, Andy Murney. Yeah, if, if you hear, you can listen to that. Weldor. Also, I took, managed to a bit because the armor kept coming off it, and I took a bit and I just said to Anthony, "Y'all want this back?" I said, "No, I'll just keep it." So I just I've now got a bit of that as well. So that's a mentor I've got from there. I'll always remember and then, that. And then, if you look on the uh, wiki page for Ruff Ruff Dougal, uh, you see pictures of the Beetleweight version, and I'm just like, that is the crowning achievement. It's really adorable. I mean, the the, the version. I love the version he's got. Is the little uh, green green coat and his uh, hat. My mum knitted that. Oh, really? My mum knits all of Dougal's clothes. Also, you're pretty honoured actually, because the other picture of it of the wiki is with um, the the. <laughs> About it, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. But at least at least with King Bee though, and Weldol, which is covered in tape because all his armour fell off it. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> Miniature One Hundred and One is just off the camera as well. Yeah, the one with the little axe on it. Yeah, that was fun though. But yeah, it was. It's it's great to see that. I love that. I actually didn't realize you were on the wiki. I just I was just checking now because I was just checking the stuff of the match. And I looked down. Oh, there he is. And it's quite sad because all the picture of him on the scrap heaps also there. Yeah, but I, I tend to try not to look at that picture. Yeah, we brings... all threw our downships. It brings too many bad memories. And just <laughs> as the uh, little like little sentimental thing that leash on Dougal hmm. that was Brambles so Aww. that's really that's, really, that's quite nice that's quite... yeah and he was my beloved dog so Brambles still here with me he's there yeah. in, he's there in spirit yeah oh that's adorable so, a lot a lot of heart and soul have gone has gone into this robot and I the, the day he goes up against a powerful spinner is just gonna be the end of me all from I, a, all starting no. from a robot that's sat on fire yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we all have our downships. I mean, oh, it's two. All right, two rough of Dougal's credit, right? In series six, it set on fire. It got like axed by Cyrax. It got like it got tossed and everywhere. It was still moving at the end, barely. It the heat final, yes. It, not, last, not heat final. it, it lasted the whole the whole the whole five minutes. Yeah, which I've got to give it credit because it didn't do that in series uh, series five. Well, the link fell. Exactly, yeah, but in series, yeah, it was against three robots in this particular... Well, particularly against two robots, really, because Weldor didn't do much to them. Um, and they managed to survive still, on fire, completely black. <laughs> the weapon not wor- barely working at that point. And the remover link stayed in. So I guess making it a suppository does work. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. But I might need some proper veterinary advice for that one. Yeah. But... Uh... Those were those were all our robots. Some great, some predictable, and some um, wasp. Uh, <laughs> they, they don't really have, they, don't, they can't really put them in their own cat. They got their own category of wasp. You know, that, I, this, I mean, they might they re- rename the PS to shit reward to the wasp award just for series six, just for sucking so badly. Uh, PS to PS to wasp. PS to wasp. That, actually, that could be a, a valuable title. I have to I have to make a I have to make an edited version of that award for it. Oh, I've I've just looked on the wiki now. Uh, going back to Dougal, I've just looked on the wiki now. There's like this really sad picture of Dougal after his fight in Series Six. It's just all his fur has been burnt and defluffed, and his face is all burnt. And there's in the background just a large sign saying "No barking." <laughs> the last known picture. <laughs> and it's like that is actually really sad. His ears have fallen off as well. I know. And it's just oh. fluff pouring off the top of it, and it's mm. it it, it, it uh, needs to go to the vet, I think. Right, right next to it is a picture after a series five qualifier. In fact, that's the one you're looking at without his ears. If you go to the next one, it's just outside of a warehouse with a giant sign saying "No barking." Beyond no, that, that, that's what I was looking at, but the ears have been cut off as well, uh, or burnt off. Uh, look how they massacred my boy. <laughs> that might be the thumbnail. I don't know. <laughs> no. You, you fucking um, dead. I'm not. I'm, I'm, I wasn't joking. I'm, it's boss getting fisted. That's the thumbnail. <laughs> <laughs> that's easily got to be it. I'll put a sensor bar or something over it, and then I'll be it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I mean, we'll go briefly over the battles, but really, a lot of it, particularly the razor ones, it's just it's a razor battle. You know. Razor grabbed the robot, went through their shitty little hardware store plastic armor, and then that was the end of the fight. Yeah. Oh, 
most Razor fights, this one actually had pornography in it. So it did, um, and I, I love again. I love the fact how much of a punching bag Wasp was in this fight. It got fisted, it got flipped twice, and even like Razor got to go in and Sergeant Bash, and it it looked like an absolute uh, pathetic robot by the end of it. And I always keep forgetting that Bruce Max has got yeeted out of the arena in this in this in, in this particular one. Yeah, Rage and Reality actually achieved a uh, rare feat in ootering two robots in a row. Yeah, and for a new robot, particularly like a new, you know, design robot, it's pretty impressive actually. You know, I think between... four other robots have done that. I think so because um, uh, I'm kind of trying to who else has done that. I mean, I, uh, I mean, I know the Thermidor did it two in the same battle. Yeah, we're, we're talking two in a row, and that's it. Not like multiple consecutive routes, like eruption or atomic or anything. Ah, okay. I mean, I'm sure there's some, but I'm not. I'm probably not remembering them at this moment in time. But... Ah, yeah. Uh, the list here: Thermidor, We the Big Cheese, Chaos Two, and um, Big Rubber. Yeah, they, 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 they sound they sound about right. Yeah. Um, I mean, honestly, Rage and Reality really, apart from just one little grab from Razor, really, really didn't have, didn't suffer that much in this battle, really. And Razor got, as as usual, Razor got absolutely no, nothing, no harm to it, no threat. Just kind of wandered around and just grabbed everything. Particularly Brutus Max, because that was the one it loved to grab hold of the most, because all those wheels and wood and. It was just, it was calling towards it. It really was. It was, uh, addictive. But... How would you have laughed if, um, Razor was cutting into Bruce Maximus and then suffered the same fate as Hypnodisc did to Nasty Warrior? Or get, like, a splinter stuck in it. Yeah, and then completely <laughs> immobilized the robot. Do you know what I would have loved to have seen that? Just, um, just for the fact that the waiting champion goes out in the first round. Yeah. I and mean, that's never happened. So... I would love to have seen that happen there, <laughs> but you know, at, at least we got some of that karma like in Series Eight with Razor. You know, that was that was kind of funny. Yeah, it wasn't as robot. funny, but well, so <laughs> I mean, that's really that's really that's really, that's really all that happened in that fight, though. Right? You know, Bruce Mas- Bruce's match got destroyed, Wasp got fisted, Radio Reality flipped stuff, and uh, Razor just grabbed things. Razor, was... a Razor, Razor be Razor. Um, unfortunately, I've raised in the next battle to say that, but the, the the next battle was relatively well. A lot of it was just kind of, a lot of it was pushing and shoving, apart from Dougal getting set on fire. Um, Dougal getting set on fire and then running around the arena screaming so loud <laughs> it didn't get picked up by the microphone. If a ro- he if, is actually, fire, please help him. And if a robot could like could scream, it would be doing it there. I it was it was. It was, it was just running around all over the place. There's bits of it were falling off, and it was on fire, and it just spread so quickly. You you know that um, video on YouTube with the screaming goat? Yeah. It's the, play that sound effect over that fight, and you'll have just perfection right there. <laughs> Bit of a robot meme there. We got going there. I want to see that on shunt posting. Someone get onto that. <laughs> and World War School just got pushed in the pit. Um, yeah. They didn't really do anything in this fight because basically Tetris just wouldn't let let him go at any point. It was kind of funny because like Tetris is like this big, mean, like really scary looking machine compared to everything else because it's just got this like completely like scrap aesthetic to it, and it's got this crusher on it, and then their crusher just kind of like slightly pushed down on the top of Weldor. Like it, you could see their panel move slightly, and that was the best that their weapon could do. Yeah, the actual spike on tetanus is just like a piece of metal. Like it's just got like a, it's, it's there's no there's no there's not like it's um custom made or anything. It seems like I it, wouldn't be surprised if the spike bent itself. You know, they did that in series five with their little spike, which was so thin. They but yeah, this, this one was it's a bit more solid. This one is a lot thicker, but it did about just as much damage as it did in series five. Um, yeah. It, it's, it's it more barely grabber. functioned as a grabber, and and that was about all they could do with it. Although to its credit, though, at least the uh, the bottom bit made it a lot easier to push robots around, despite those really thin t- wheels it has, because they got Reldor pretty comfortably into the pit with no real issues. They were just kind of hugging them against the wall for ages, then suddenly they're in the pit. Like the camera doesn't even like fu- you don't even see the bit where they're getting dragged over. You just the camera cuts over and they're just suddenly putting them. Which means Dougal outlasted Weldor, which means ha. Fuck you, Anthony. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> we won't know who won that fight, at least. Uh, I'm joking. 
you little Irish bastard. And Cyrax existed in this fight. Like, they got like, one hit on Dougal, and the rest of the time it was just kind of hanging about, waiting for the one robot to die. Um... If, let's face it, I mean, Dougal wasn't getting past the first round despite how much of a uh, thrilling display it performed, being on fire. But <laughs> Internal combustion done right. Indefinitely. Um, then for the next round, of course, Cyrax and Razor's just that. Razor Crush. It, it went about as well as you would expect. The only highlights being that one time Cyrax flipped them and, and Jonathan Pierce had an orgasm because he thought they were going to lose. You know, I, I I really can't stand that. I, like, can I just go on a quick tangent in a sec? If you want to. I, I really can't stand that when like a robot flips another robot that's been dominating. Like a good example is a uh, Hypnotist versus um, Atomic in Series Five. Mm. I don't like it when uh, Atomic got the flip in, flipped Hypnotist over, and JP was just orgasming into the microphone going, oh my god, is Hypnotis going to lose this? Is Hypnotis going to lose it? I was like, no. It, 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 he flipped it once. He's got a Shremek for a reason. If he's not self writing then yes, he's going to lose. But Hypnotis self right straight away. Razor self right is straight away. I just don't like it when, like, JP just loses his mind because a winning robot shows a moment of weakness once. Yeah, he- he kind of did that a lot, didn't he? Because like I remember so many times when like a robot's dominated four minutes and fifty seconds of the fight, and then like they bump into one of the house robots in the corner patrol zone at the last minute, and he's like, "Oh, are they going to lose that on bad control?" Yeah. <laughs> I mean, at least Cyrus credit though. At least they lasted the full five minutes and didn't really suffer any major like permanent damage. It was always just holes, really. Although R.I.P. to the light on top. They literally look like blue cheese afterwards, but... Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, of course, obviously, due to that one flip, they obviously won the fight on aggression. Everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, Raze only won on damage. They were aggressive, hands down. Uh, also, oh, they tried to use Real the quick, I just want to say this, because I have this written down as a note. Oh, yeah. um, Jonathan Pierce said on at least two occasions, CCC factor regarding Razor. <laughs> CCC factor? Yes. Love factors. The- the crushability creates carnage or something, whatever the fuck that he said. Can I just say back to Jonathan Pierce about the talk to him about the JFO factor that just fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, has, this has been building for a while now. <laughs> talk about unnecessary acronyms like WASP. Okay, WASP makes a little bit of sense, but what the fuck does CCC factor mean? Why does that suddenly matter now and not the previous, like, eight series that Razor was in? Maybe it's his favorite type of sandwich. Cheese, cucumbers, and crackers. Are the, what, the crackers on the, are the part of the... Are they the sandwich bit? Or are they inside the sandwich? I don't fucking know. <laughs> you brought it up. <laughs> I'm just like, no, but the fight was boring, as I expected. Because it's Razor. Um, then there's Rea- Raging Reality and Tetanus 2. They had a slightly better fight, and but it was cut short because Raging Reality just let loose their inner chaos too, and just yeeted them out of the arena. Although Refbot, when he was trying to do his job, fell in the pit because yeah, uh, he had one. He only has one. Jo- oh, yeah, there's two jobs really, really to separate robots and count them out. Maybe put a fire out if he can actually get his flame to go. He's a nice flame He's his fire extinguisher to get anywhere near it. He failed at all three of those in this episode. <laughs> Yeah, because it he a... never counted Wasp out. <laughs> they just assumed Wasp was counted out. He never put out Dougal while it was on fire for like ten goddamn minutes, yeah, and then he you. threw himself in the pit. <laughs> Actually, in that fight, I remember there was one bit where Dougal's running around on fire, and Refbot's on the other side of the arena. And he he fires his extinguisher once, and it just goes, eh. And it's just no good. My boy being set alight. <laughs> so he just Dougal should have stopped, dropped, and rolled. We all know this. <laughs> You never taught it to roll, Owain? That's like the second trick after sit. <laughs> he, was try- he was trying his best, but he just had four wheels and he couldn't roll over anything. He couldn't do anything because he was on fire and he was in pain and agony and the others weren't just helping him. They were just laughing and watching. And you poor bastard. Do you want to draw a second, Owain? <laughs> <laughs> he got a new pink coat and everything for that fight. Yeah, the pink coat is now a black coat. 
No, <laughs> next next time, if you want your dog to survive in the arena, don't cover it in like installation <laughs> installation stuff. So. Uh. Uh. Yeah, that fight was slightly better than watching Razor Crusher out for five minutes, but not by much. Yeah, they're very close out of the arena flip. Yeah, the flipper was quite good though. Actually, it was quite an aggressive flip to get over. It just went almost like 180. Yeah. <laughs> Which I never, I never thought a robot that big could like get 180 flip like that. But and also, I just Growler was completely useless in the site and in the PPZ just kind of headbutting them occasionally, but never really doing much. Oh, that's one thing we forgot to mention with Razor and Cyrax was that was uh, Mr. Psycho and Growler's first fight. Oh, that was, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Didn't they play like the opening, the the little teaser? intro of the house robots coming out um like three different times leading up to that yeah. fight or something the exact same um, and then intro. yeah the exact same clip every time and then mr psycho didn't do anything of note and then growler didn't do anything of note it was a great debut episode <laughs> clearly i mean the most they did was mr S mr psycho knocked a light off and growler did nothing he's causing damage donk <laughs> that will never get old <laughs> Even my series, even series one, I don't care. Um, yeah, the heat Look final. Heat final though went about how I expected again. Although Matilda well, got a nice, well, Matilda got a nice yeah. shot on Raging Reality though. Like panel flying off and stuff, but you know the best. You know it's not the best she's ever done. I mean, I'm just looking at Supernova last series. I think it just got massacred. Yeah. But it was a very kind of like standard. Bit of grabbing, bit of Matilda again, bit of damage on them, and then pitted. Can we just say this heat was kind of interesting in all the matches that didn't have Razor? Oh yeah, anything without any, it's the same with a lot of problems with Razor heats. Anything without Razor is sometimes a bit is usually better than anything with Razor. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like definitely. if you've seen any of Razor's fights, you've seen all of these fights already. Yeah, and like just... they go the exact same way every time. It's a shame, really, because there are like a lot of like semi fires like in the next one with the Firestorm, where like you see them a lot, but they're not always the same fight every time. It's not just oh, it's a flip, oh, they're out, they're out or something. You know, the opponents you you have different like things that happen in them. Whilst Razor, it's always just it grabs it, makes some holes in them, maybe lifts it up, and then drops them because they've held holding on to, holding on to them too long, and then they grab them again. This is why we have. Rule where grabbers can't grab hold of a robot for more than ten seconds now. Yeah, because it's because of it's purely. I think I think it must be motivated because of Razor, honestly, because of how boring its fights always were. It was it was in like thirty seconds in the old series. Or was there no limit? Uh, yeah, at all? I think I think both shows it was thirty seconds in the old days. I mean, I just, but they never said that rule out loud. I just can't believe it. Considering that all the matches were five minutes long, that's like a that is, oh, it's quite a lot of the battle. 30 seconds, considering. Actually, maybe uh, maybe, in, back in the day on Robot Wars, it was 60 seconds. I mean... I always assumed in the old days they didn't have that rule, because, like I said, they never announced that as a rule. It might be just BattleBots had that rule, and maybe just presumed that they had it, but maybe there wasn't a rule for it. I don't know. If there wasn't, if there was a rule, they, had, they didn't make it clear. And if there wasn't a rule, that doesn't surprise me. That's the best explanation I've ever heard for Robot Wars in general. If there's a rule, we didn't make it clear. Yeah, because yeah. like, it's like, it, it, it's if, like... <laughs> not just like for the for like this, but if any rule exists in Robot Wars, they did not make it clear. Yeah, it's like it's like that bit, that moment in Series Four with um, Suicide Tendencies against Wheelie Cheese, where they never really mentioned the one-sided rule that had changed until they were knocked out because of it. And they felt like it, they were just heard about this rule now. I'm sure they might, might have been told about it, but it wasn't purely very clear to them. And it just looks kind of cheap in the long run. But I don't know. It's that's the that was the, always the major problem with the classic series. Is the rules were just kind of particularly like I, mean, I think more so definitely in like series five below. They were just they just seem to make them up sometimes. But even by series six, it's still like what are the rules here? Like can we see a printout of what the rules were? If they had any, it'll be just like to be continued on it. Yeah, yeah kind of naff to be honest. I mean, I've just, I mean, if I look to the rules, one of the rules would be like if Razor's in the arena, they win. Yeah, they hold on to infinite of time. I don't know. Unless you're Tornado. Yeah, of course. <laughs> but. We oh, did nothing wrong. No, they didn't. We all know that. And we'll get to talk about it later on this series, which will be fun. That'll be, that'll be interesting. That'll be very interesting. 
not really, because I don't think they cheated. But uh, overall, what do people think of this episode? Because as a as a premiere episode of series of of a series, you know, kind of boring. I liked it a little bit more than the series five one, um, but not by much. If I, you had never seen Robot Wars before, I think it would have made an okay introduction. Because, like, you understand how crushers work, you understand how flippers work kind of, like, naturally. You don't have to, like, comprehend what a 7,000 RPM drum is going to do to something. Mm. Um, but if you're a fan of the show, you've seen this episode a hundred times by this point. Yeah, particularly with Razor being here. really doesn't help anything. Um... I mean, out of ten, I'd probably give this like a maybe a five, five and a half, maybe. I give it a four. Four. I mean, I'm not pushing I, it much with five anyway. I don't really want to see Razor in my opening episode of a Robot War series. Well, thankfully, this is the last series it's in until series eight. So, oh, it's the last. It's the last, it's the last series up here in the classic series. So, but there's way more Razor to go because we've got the semi-finals and the grand final, and yay. Just, just can me out of the rest of this series. Are you sure? <laughs> even, even, yeah. You know, just because there's no more rough off two, you don't want to do it, do any more, do you? Exactly. Fair enough. That's respectable. Uh, what would you, what would you give it out of ten, Mike? Murdered my son. Okay. <laughs> what would you? Um, oh, I don't remember what I gave it on my, uh, on my YouTube show because that was like ages ago that I got through series six, but. You know, I haven't just watched the episode back and not trying to be a sarcastic asshole during the whole thing. Um, yeah, still probably like a five or a, a six, maybe, depending on how you feel about uh, fire and watching Razor sit in one spot all day. Um, yeah, it was just super average. It's one of the most average episodes of Robot Wars I've ever seen. Yeah, I mean, thankfully, we have a better semifinalist in Heat B with Firestorm. I guess. I don't know. It's, it's better, better than watching Razor crush holds and things all the time, I suppose. Um, I guess we'll briefly go over the robots for the Heat B. Um, of course, you have Firestorm 4 coming back again, who isn't destroyed by B-Capitator's shenanigans. It... You know, I, I just noticed... What's that? Firestorm is usually like one of the most beloved robots in the original series of Robot Wars. It never changed. No. I mean, actually, from series four onwards, the robot pretty much never, like, never. It, it, it probably obviously improved like minor parts of it. it. It probably improved massively internally, but externally, like these days, people will give you shit if you keep entering the same robot over and over. Oh yeah, it's weird. It's, it's it seems maybe it's just because it's, the design was so iconic and it just worked all the time. Maybe just people didn't weren't too bothered about it. And also because his fighting style wasn't boring like Razor, so maybe that been part of towards it. But Good thing. Yeah, cause it's, it's against another veteran in the Heat Final as well with the, with the Exterminator, who thankfully doesn't have the really sh um, shitty axe from Series 4. Or the... Um, it doesn't have, yeah, it does have the spinning disc from Series 7. It's that kind of Series 5 slash 6 version, which is a bit kind of boxy looking. Can we oh. just say... Um, the flip on Exterminator from Firestorm was the most violent front hinge flip I've ever seen in my entire life. Oh god, it was. Like, actually, Firestorm got a few, like, savage flips in this heat. Unlike Megahertz as well. Firestorm was just showing no chill. No, I mean, it's, in its fight, it destroyed every robot. <laughs> like, it was the only one left standing in its entire thing, and it just had to go for, with who lasted the longest, as opposed to who actually came second. But, yeah, Exterminator really had no chance against Firestorm, honestly. It's one of those robots that just... It wasn't built to take on a robot like Firestorm, which is aggressive when it's flipping. I and mean, that's also why people like Firestorm as well, and also why it's not boring. It's because it's not—it's it's quite aggressive when it's flipping. Like it'll, yeah. it'll, it'll go for you. <laughs> you know, what you show any sign of weakness, that flipper's you're, you're flipped over. Like the Morv was in Series Four, twice. <laughs> Wait, it'll just go for you. Um, and then, there's, of course, there's Megahertz Two as well. Um, weirdly, I don't, I, of all robots to come back. Almost slightly unchanged from series two, and never thought I'd see Megahertz come back. Considering they had the Pyramid in series three. Yeah, they had Tuts Revenge in series three. I was just like, yeah, that was a um, bad time. Nah. Also, they're actually they're actually in terms of teams, they're the, they're actually the team that's closest to me geographically. So they're only twenty miles away from me. 
Oh. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's a, I mean, actually, maybe they're more bolt from the blue. I'm not sure. I think they're probably slightly further, but they're like Kendall, which is like probably 40, well, which, 30, 30 miles which, away from me. Which one would you prefer to have? Oh, megahertz, because you know, design-wise, they're awesome. So you know, I'll take them. Bolt from blue was rubbish. So <laughs> the four flips per half fight thing. No. Don't let you say that. They'll get angry and then they'll demand cake. No, I, I think in their case they don't want cake, <laughs> given the uh, saltiness of what they got written on it. But I. <laughs> There's one thing I did like for Megahertz though, when it got flipped over by Firestorm, it's like entire PC just collapsed on itself. <laughs> it's just a hollow... Very thing. satisfying <laughs> moment. It really was, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was like... I wasn't, when, I first, when it first started, I wasn't sure if it was like a you know, hollow or a solid, and then when they got flipped, I was like, nope, it's definitely hollow. Because it just crumpled in on itself. Again, very satisfying. Um, I, I like the addition of the random axes, even if they are pointless. Like, they tried to add an extra rep onto it, but they just kept failing and just getting stuck on one part of it. Which is dumb. Um, then there's Barbaric Response. Who... The most boring robots that I've ever seen in my entire life. And also, they they just got completely screwed in Series 7. Kind of yeah. just stuck on them, and then Refbot's like, I can't do anything about this. And maybe there's something, but, like, in BattleBots, they would separate the robots. Here, they're just like, no, just keep them stuck. But then again, do you actually see Barbaric Response beating either Grim Reaper or Big Nipper? No, but I, I'm always I'm always of the opinion that robots have a fair chance at least, not just be stuck stuck with a robot forever. Yeah, you know, if you're gonna lose, at least lose the proper way, not like have really shitty, you know, way they win in Series Seven. I guess I don't know. Uh, but it's, it's not the most interesting robot look in the world, I and mean, it didn't change much between Series Six and Seven. And for such a name like is that is that like UK robot syndrome? It's called Barbaric Response. They're really kind of like long and epic name, and it's just a wet, just a flipper. Um, there's, there's a bunch of robots that do that in Battlebots, yes. Yeah, and even robots, you have like you have Vector of Armageddon and Corporal Punishment, and they're just you know both on the same, maybe the same guy coincidentally, but they're both just like wedges. To be fair, you can't say anything bad about Vector of Armageddon because it's one of the robots we saw, Robot Nerds. So. Oh, that's true, yeah. Hello there, Jim Dramatic here, and uh, you might be wondering why I'm just here with different audio quality. Uh, this is because I essentially recorded this quite a while ago, and I didn't listen to the whole recording. Uh, it turns out that around the last 10 minutes of it, I just blanked out. I don't know if OBS wasn't working, I don't know if there was something with mic problems, or something disconnected from it, or I accidentally pressed them while I was checking one of the options, but... Um, yeah, the last four robot summaries um, were missing, so I thought I'd just throw my, my little two cents in and tell you what I think about these robots quickly, uh, just to get this episode, because this episode's already getting quite long. Um, so yeah, I'll talk about Cedric Slammer first. Cedric Slammer I felt bad for, because it was actually good in the New Blood tournament, and actually looked pretty decent in this heat, and said Megahertz went through, which I like Megahertz, don't be wrong, but I think Cedric Slammer was better. Um, also, they got very lucky, because they got flipped over onto their self-writer by... Um, by Firestorm, and then they got nudged, so their self writer got stuck, and they couldn't self write. So, bit of an issue there. Um, still a great robot, though. Honestly, for what it was, it's a shame, really, that this robot didn't make it through. But you know, that's how we, the game game works when you're against Firestorm. Uh, Colossus is very just okay. Like Colossus, just like this rear hinge flipper that couldn't self write because it was got it got put next to the wall <laughs> by Firestorm again by Firestorm. Um, in Series 7, it didn't do much better. It had a little sort at the back, which didn't really help at all anyway. Um, very middle of the road, kind of average. It looked okay, it looked competently made. It wasn't horrible. It's just, there's nothing really about it that kind of screams amazing. It was just Colossus, really. Um, Robo Chicken, I felt bad that it didn't get past the first round again. Uh, they had a very, un very unlucky in Series 5, and lucky here as well in Series 6, really. But in Series 7, they gave more luck in their heat final, I think, personally. But. It was nice to see them back. It's actually funny how they're slowly morphing into a more serious robot than they used to be. Um, I don't know why they went from being less serious, but I guess they wanted to make a proper robot eventually, which is fine. I respect that. Um, just to make it past the first round, honestly. And it's kind of the same for Spirit of Scorpion as well. Spirit of Scorpion definitely improved over the Series 4 version, which is hilarious, but completely incompetent in terms of fighting. Um, it's got the Series 7 design similar uh, to it, um, and... It's actually quite a competent design. I like the spinner at the back. I like the little wedge in the front. It's well mo well made and definitely more improved on the Series 4 version, like I said. But, um, yeah, there's not much I can say about Spirit of Scorpion, honestly. It's just kind of... It's okay. It's, it's not a bad robot. It's fine. I like, I like. It's definitely an improvement, which I at least can respect that they improved the robot. 
Um, like I said, these are my brief thoughts, though. There's nothing really too major. I just want to add this in because, unfortunately, this part got cut out. So you're wondering where I've been also. Yeah, yeah I've just been uh, busy with work, but also panicking about stuff with this lockdown. But um, I finally got around to grinding through, getting this review made, and hopefully you'll be hearing this in about at least a day after I've recorded this. So uh, stay good, people, and hopefully the Heat B review will be coming out relatively soon. So um, see you later, guys. Bye.